today. <laughs> money is the root of all evil, <laughs> but money makes the world go round, does it not? And more. Oh gosh, am I back again? What's going on? Facebook's given me comments this week so far, but I'm having all these connection issues. So hopefully I'm live and you're here and you can see me and hear me okay. So I'll just briefly start again. We're gonna talk about money today. So when you've got like no money, you're that kind of um, person or family that is paycheck to paycheck, and you've got money sort of complications and struggles, how do we grow our business? And what are some of the things that we should be focusing on? So it's a really interesting discussion. There are lots of perspectives that we need to consider. Hello, Jen, I've got comments again. Woohoo! <laughs> I didn't have connection in the beginning, but hopefully I'm back and you can hear me and see me okay. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mel. Hi, Davina. Hello, Sean. Good to see you guys on. Thank you for saying hello to Henry, my little mate over here, my messenger bot. Hello, Olive. So as you're coming in, put the palm tree down below. If you're in my free Facebook community, Social Media Strategies for Home Business Owners, put the little fish down below. And those of you in my online crew coaching community, I didn't for a while, Sean, have comments, but they've just popped up. I know, what is going on? Uh, put the cruise ship down below if you're uh, somebody in my online crew coaching community. An awesome live call yesterday, guys, in my coaching community. It was lovely to see so many of you on screen and get all your questions and great, great discussion. So, um, oh, and just a reminder, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm interviewing the winner of the last video challenge. So make sure you, you come here tomorrow, same time, same place tomorrow. I'll be uh, interviewing Rose, uh, Rose Leek, who was the winner of our last video challenge. I finally got her on screen scheduled for tomorrow. So look forward to that and hopefully you can support Rose um, while I interview her and see her live as well. And I guess on that, guys, the, we are gearing up for um, the next video challenge. Hello, Glenn. Hi, Susan. Um, it doesn't start till October the 11th. Um, the group is the same group that I've used previously, which is the 21 day online crew video challenge. Those of you that are already in it, you can invite people to it, but I'm not approving new requests until the first. So, um, you can ask to request to be put in the group and come the 1st of October, I will approve, um, you know, everybody's request to that. So who, I want to know who's up for the next video challenge. It will be 21 days. Hey, Laurie. Good, thank you. Uh, it will be 21 days again, and we will hone in, hopefully, your skills on live video. So let me know if you're up for the challenge. I'm interested to know. Uh, hey, Megan, good to see you on. So let's talk about money. Oh, before we talk about money, if there's anyone on live uh, and we haven't met before, I guess I should introduce myself. <laughs> My name is um, Helen Martin. Thank you, Sean. Sean's just dropped the link in the comments section for the free video challenge, the next one that starts on October 11th. So just click on that link, request to join, and I will approve your request on the 1st, and we'll get you ready to go for the 11th, okay? And those of you that are already in, you're already in the group, but if you are new to it, or those people that have already done it, you want to invite new people to, that's the link that Sean's just um, put down. Jen, I need to do a live video challenge again. Love to have you participate in the video challenge, Jen. Um, so, yeah, do it. Mel's still deciding. Come on, Mel, you can do it. You can only get better. There is no downside to doing another video challenge other than the commitment. But if you think about that, it's only 21 days to hone in your skills, to get more viewers, to, you know, increase... Um, you know, people watching you, getting interested in what you're saying. Like, there's no downside, Mel. <laughs> uh, twist your arm. So let's, uh, yeah, so I'm back to introducing myself. I'm being distracted by your comments now. Um, <clears throat> so Sean's going to be a part of this one. I'm slacking a little. Great. Love to see you back in a video challenge, Sean. That would be amazing. So for those of you that um, have, are not familiar with my lives, my name is Helen Martin and I'm your online crew captain. So I am at service here to this amazing online crew community that we have. So we are home-based business owners, entrepreneurs, 
there's people in network marketing, direct sales, um, you know, that kind of business model. And we are learning to leverage social media to build our business online and use those modern social media strategies to truly attract people to us and not chase anybody about our business. We don't want to chase customers. We don't want to chase anybody to join us in our business. We truly want to attract people to us through attraction marketing strategies and learning how to utilize social media. So that's what we do here. Now, one of the things that stops us from achieving what we want to achieve in this industry in the traditional way and online is money. So money makes the world go round. We don't want to focus on money necessarily. You should be more focused on the impact that you can make on people and the value that you can bring to people rather than sort of lining your hip pocket. But obviously money is what we need to invest in our business to buy products or if you have an auto ship, those kind of things to stay committed to your business. Those of you that are doing social media and you want to be doing Facebook ads or you are already doing Facebook ads, you need a budget for that. You need money to do that. So there's a lot of issues that we need to consider. And it's unfortunate, but in the US alone, 76% of the population survive paycheck to paycheck. So majority of people uh, just surviving on money comes in and then it goes out towards the bills. It's just the way majority of people live. So it makes it difficult when we've got bills coming in, but we have this just ultimate desire to build a business of this kind. So small, you know, entrepreneurial based sort of based business. And people generally get into this kind of business model because they strive for something more. They don't want to be stuck in the nine to five. You've got dreams and you've got goals and you want choices. Choices to stay home with your family, you know, your kids or look after your loved ones. That could even be elderly loved ones. Um, you know, there's a whole variety of reasons there. You want more discretionary income to do the things that you want to do, to go on holidays that you were never able to, you know, growing up. Or when you go out to dinner, you can choose the most expensive French champagne and not even think twice about it. Um, because you're not watching, oh, the steak's 30 bucks, we better go for the parmigiana, like the schnitzel or something like that, because that's only 10 bucks. Like, we don't want to live life that. Nobody really wants to live life like that. So we have goals and dreams and we see something that might give us the opportunity to earn the income we want, to have the choices that we want in life, okay? Like you guys would know that. I don't have to preach that to you. I know that you guys share those thoughts with me about what we want out of our lives and we want something more. We don't just want to settle. We don't want to settle for minimum wage. We don't want to settle for, uh, you know, money comes in, money goes out. We want more coming in than goes out. <laughs> and in this kind of industry, uh, we are very much stuck with the effort in the beginning and the money in the beginning, like it's, um, you know, work, 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 sort of get paid, work, 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 get paid to somewhere along the line, less work, less work, less work, get paid, 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 get paid. So somewhere along the line in this journey, we are striving for that residual income where we're working less and earning more. And that's why a majority of you would, you know, be in this entrepreneurial type space. Now, the problem is that it all costs money. So entering the business costs money. Then if you've got something that's got a product base, then um, you've probably got to buy products every month, maybe, that costs money. Then we've got conferences or training or you know other things that cost money. So we go into this new wonderful business and it ends up costing us a lot more money initially because we've still got no more in income coming in, but we saw this opportunity. Now we've got extra money going out and you're know, feeling like, I'm now going backwards because I'm investing all of this, but I haven't got the return back and now I'm worse off than what I was before for striving for something different than what everybody else has. Does that make sense? So we get caught in this situation of, I wanna strive for my goals and my dreams, but I'm spending more money than I'm making and majority of people stop, okay? Then we've got those of you that are then wanna learn how to do it on social media because we have all the traditional struggles of building this kind of business. We don't wanna hassle anyone, so we go online. But when we go online, we need to recognize that it's a whole different ball game 
whole different ball game. You've got to learn about social media. You've got to learn about those of you that are doing advertising, then Facebook ads and sales funnels sometimes. Maybe you go into email marketing or learning about bots or um, you know, copywriting skills and uh, the list goes on. And then you get another little piece of software and well, that's 20 bucks a month and another little piece of software that's suggested to you and that's another 10 bucks a month and then suddenly, you know, you, you just got all these additional expenses because you're trying to learn how to do social media. And now you're even worse off than you were before. <laughs> so it can be a bit of a snowball effect. So let's put some things in perspective if that's you. Like, can you guys resonate with what I'm saying here? I would imagine a lot of you would be. And we start this journey to have amazing financial goals, but there's a hell of a journey to get there. And if you think you're going to get there without investing further or without, you know, learning new skills and stuff like that, you're delusional um, because it just doesn't happen, especially with social media. So what do we do in these situations? There's two, two things that we need to consider here that I wanted to share with you. And one is the actual physical financial complications um, of actual dollars in, dollars out. So we need to look at, at that. The other side of it is the social media side of it and whether you go into um, you know, sales funnels and Facebook ads and stuff like that, like if you're really serious about it. So there's are two different ways to look at it. The first thing to recognize in the, just the more traditional sense with you know, the money side of it is that one, like if you don't have it, you don't have it and you can't sugarcoat that. Like we need to be real with ourselves with where we're at and what our goals are and what it takes. OK, either way, whether it's you've invested in a business and you're building it the traditional way or you're building it online or both, you'd need to accept that you need to invest like you're investing in your business. You've got an initial package and then there's probably some kind of monthly fee, whether it's an auto ship for products or, you know, something else that you're paying for. It's all part of the process that you have to budget for. You just have to. It's all, you know, otherwise you're giving up. You're giving up on your goals and dreams because you're focusing on that kind of monthly type cost. So how do you manage that? This is where we have to get really real with ourselves in the whole money side of it is if you're really struggling, what are you spending your money on? Like, is there anything that you can cut out that's not really essential? Go through your bank statement, work out what you're spending money on and see where you can cut out so you can afford the things that you want to afford to get to your goals one day. So we think to um, sort of immediate with bills going out, money going out, money going out. And we're not planning enough sometimes for the investment that we need in the business that we're striving for or the money we need to um, spend in increasing our skill level on social media. So if you want to make it on social media, you can't, you really, you can't just turn up, do a few posts here and there do a few Facebook lives here and there and you're going to make it on social media or all these people are going to start following you or you know you offer something out and they're going to buy it immediately like people that do that um, are not going to be successful on social media one because it moves too fast two because you're not growing your skill level you need skills in knowing what it is that's going to help you you know things like max max you know max <laughs> what am I trying to say? Maximize your potential on social media. So things that you're doing when you're posting, algorithm things. I mean, it's not the be all and end all. It's the value that you bring to the marketplace. The more value that you can bring to the marketplace on social media, the more money that you will make. But you've got to learn those skills, guys. They don't just come because you feel like, oh, I'm going to do it on social media because I don't want to do it the traditional way. And you just jump on and do it. You need to learn copywriting skills. Those of you that are doing Facebook ads and you don't know what you're doing, you are wasting your money. You may get your ads account shut down and you could be wasting hundreds of dollars a week towards something that you're not getting any return on right now because you haven't learned the proper skills to know how to put a Facebook ad together. So that in, that involves investing in learning about Facebook ads. There are so many of you that are paying for Facebook ads and you don't know what the hell you're doing and you're wondering why you're not getting the return. And then you wonder why your ads accounts are getting shut down because you haven't been taught properly 
about how to do Facebook ads properly. So all of that is a skill level. I don't say that to put any of you down or anything. It's a massive skill that you need to learn to be profitable in. All those things cost money. So what do we need to do, okay? Jen, you have to review what you are spending your money on and stop chasing shiny things. Exactly, Jen. Many people in this industry are looking for the quick fix and the shiny object. So something else comes out, it's like, oh, I'll go over there. Oh, I'll go over there. And if you like me, I've done it too, guys. I've bought programs I've never watched. I've bought training modules and programs from gurus that I've never opened the initial link after I bought it. Shame on me. <laughs> like, that's on me. And I take full responsibility of that because we're always looking for the thing that's going to get us the result the fastest. But what we need to really focus on, this is what I, I you know, I, I don't need to sort of highlight the obvious any more than I already have. But be really realistic with yourself about your financial situation and what can you do to change it. So although we want to save money and see where we can cut our expenses by going through your bank statement and stuff like that, you'd be surprised at some of the things you might find on a bank statement that you know you didn't know you were paying for or um, you know, some people are a little bit just oblivious. Some people are really good with money and some people just aren't and they're not really tracking their spending. If you are short on money and you are living paycheck to paycheck, you should be tracking where you're spending your money and you'd be surprised at what you can save. The other side of it is following your, um, swallowing your pride. So not only do we need to save money to, to do or invest in the things that we want to, we need to work out ways to earn money. And that's why we go in this industry, we want to earn money on the side. But if you're doing things like um, you know, Facebook ads, you need to pay for them. If you've got an auto ship in your business, you need to pay for that. The last thing you want to do is go backwards and, not, and stop doing things because you can't afford it. So you, you, you turn off the Facebook ads and you don't buy your auto ship, you know, and stuff like that. And it's just this flow on effect of scarcity, 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 scarcity. If you need to swallow your pride and work out another way to get some money to fund your Facebook ads or things like that, then maybe that might be what you need to do. Either work out where you can cut it out or work out other ways online. Like there's plenty of things that anybody can do from home to get a little bit a bit more cash, like online jobs and you know stuff like that. I know that's not what anyone went, wants to be, but when you've got big goals and dreams and you don't have the funds at the moment to do it, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I know there's plenty of you working in jobs to fund your side business because your goals and dreams are big. And you're doing that to fund that, even though you hate the job that you're in. You're doing that to help build um, you know, your business. So you're doing what you need to do to help fund the goals and dreams and work you know, towards that and investing um, you know, in training and things like that. So do what you need to do, guys. Cut back on certain things. If you don't need it, don't buy it. So it's save money to put towards other things to keep your business going. Uh, work out other ways, like swallow your pride. If you need to go and find some extra cash, um, you know, or make it, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if we could find it? Um, you know, so Olive's saying, I have a few online jobs to help out. Like do what you need to do if you're serious enough about it. Because so many people sit in that place of complaining, but not doing anything about it. So sometimes we have to swallow our pride and find different ways. Sell some stuff. If you don't need it, sell it. There are so many online, yeah, like you can sell things on Facebook. You can sell things on Gumtree, on Craigslist, on um, all sorts of different things. Just sell some stuff that you have in your cupboards and haven't used for 20 years, 10 years, 20 years. Just sell it. Raise some funds that way to fund your business or fund some ads or fund some training or whatever. Work out what's a priority and be really realistic about that. Yeah, Sean, sure, you could do a spreadsheet and track your spending. Um, you'd be surprised when you start tracking it, what you realize you spend your money on. So it really depends on your priorities and you know what your goals and dreams are. Like look in the classifieds for, for at little online ads and something like that. You just, you just don't know until you open your eyes and look for these kind of things. The other thing we need to assess is your mindset around this. Somehow in the monks to the struggle, which majority of you would be in, you have to try to not to concentrate on the struggle. Because when you concentrate on the struggle, you get more of the struggle. When you concentrate on the bills, guess what comes in the mail? More bills. 
So we really have to try to focus on you know money coming in and checks being written out to you and hitting your bank account and visualizing you know the abundance of money and I've spoken about this before with financial sort of challenges is when you pay a bill go no problems that's that one there's plenty more where that came from like your frame of mind and your attitude around money and the lack of it is really important with all of this because you may not realize it but even when you do get some money if you've got challenges around the way you think about money and that you've always struggled and so subconsciously you think you always will when you do come into some money it won't last very long like you'll you'll spend it on bills instead of putting it aside and reinvesting on what you need to with your you just with your business you just won't necessarily make the best decisions to fast forward with your business okay now the social media side of it so there's i mean you need to work out what you need to work out and yes laurie think outside the box almost what can i sell what can i look in the classifiers to see how i can pick up some extra income to keep it going instead of giving up um you know all sorts of things on that side of it now the social media side of it some people truly believe they can't be successful unless they run facebook ads it's not true if you are committed and um you know you show up you know your brand inside out like you know what you stand for you know what you're teaching um you know where to get the content from like or you're learning it you may not know that you know exactly at the moment but you're learning all those things and you are committed to the process then you can gain traction and you can grow a good audience and you can have people buy things off you when you become valuable on social media that doesn't always have to mean paid ads I know this guys because I've done it. I stopped Facebook advertising last year for 6 months. Just stopped my Facebook advertising because I do do Facebook ads. I made the same amount of money in different businesses of mine without doing Facebook ads as when I did. Okay? But that was reflective of my audience growing and different things and different things that I was offering. I got more creative because I, I wanted a break from the ads. So it's, it's possible. I know because I've done it and I'm doing it. The power of Facebook ads though, if you can learn how to make $3 out of a dollar that you spend on Facebook ads, then you're onto a winner and it can speed up your process big time. So if that's where you're playing around, if that's what you want to do, then just learn the skills to do it properly. If you think you can do Facebook ads and you've never really been trained appropriately on Facebook ads, then you are entering dangerous territory. It's a very fast way to lose money. 100 bucks this week, 100 bucks next week, 100 bucks the week after, and it just keeps going. And you keep accepting it because somebody's told you you need to do these type of ads. And yet you don't really know what you're doing or no one's helping you evaluate those type of ads. Dangerous territory to go into. So you need to learn and invest in the skills to get really good at something and not try to delve into an area that you really know nothing about and expect to have this massive financial gain. It just doesn't work that way. So one, you can get a lot of traction on social media when you're dedicated and committed to the process. Doing live videos is an absolute must, especially if you're not doing Facebook ads. Because you need to uh, build a following, you need to build credibility, you need to build, um, you know, all that authority, credibility. The, the fastest way you can do that is through Facebook Lives. It's just a no-brainer if you're building your business online. But you can work at things and consistently work on things to gain traction on social media without having to do Facebook ads. It's possible. So if somebody says it's all pay to play, especially on a business page, it's not. I know it because I've achieved it. Um, but if you are doing Facebook ads, credit to you because it's very smart. It builds your audience. It helps you build your list. So when you can grow your email list, your email list is your own. Your Facebook page is not. Your fans and followers belong to Facebook. They don't really belong to you. If your Facebook page gets banned or shut down, so does everyone else with it. An email list you get to keep. So there's really good reasons why you want to learn about things in the online world and sales funnels and um, ads and all those kind of things. But please, I encourage you to learn and invest in your learning to do it properly. Have mentors and go through training programs to do it properly. Otherwise, it's one of the fastest way that you're actually losing money to chase your dreams. Does that make sense? You're actually wasting your money to chase your dreams. 
So just putting that into perspective, there's the actual physical money side of it that maybe if you don't have any, what can you do to reassess that, reevaluate it? Where can you save money, but where can you also make money to fund you know, your, your dreams and goals? Okay, you have to be really realistic about that and you have to maybe swallow your pride and do some things and earn some more money to fund your dreams and goals if that's what it takes. The thing that I love about some of the successful people I follow is some of the things that they've had in their life and that they've done that the average person won't do to get where they are. I was watching a video of Brendan Bouchard yesterday. Do any of you guys know who he is? He's got a pretty cool story. And he's like multiple millionaire now in um, you know the pre professional development world and teaching people to build businesses, um, you know, online, offline. Just you know, it's a great inspirational person to follow. And he had nothing. He had nothing. He was sleeping on friend. He lost everything. He was in a car accident. His life turned upside down. He had nothing. No income, nowhere to go, and was sleeping on, you know, lounge lounge chairs, like couches of friends, um, you know, at friends' places until they got sick of him. And then, you know, his girlfriend was funding everything. Like, it's just an amazing story. And I often find the people that have done it the hardest are the ones that we see successful later on. And people don't see that. People look at Brendan Bouchard and think he's amazing and how lucky he is. But no one's, you know, was there around when he got told, no, 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 you'll never amount to anything. On the bones of his ass with no money, sleeping on couches at friends' places, like, uh, you know, and he often talks about what he needed to do and he just immersed himself in learning. So he wanted to learn how to navigate the online world. So whatever he could get his hands on and whatever he could purchase to learn about copywriting and sales funnels and marketing and stuff like that. And he just started executing what he was learning and it just grew and grew and grew and grew. But he did what he needed to do to, you know, and earned money wherever he could to fund the next training program, to learn the next skill, to execute it, to get better and better and better and better. And sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to find the money to invest in your business, whether that be product, um, you know, conferences or whatever it is. Or if you're trying to master the online world, learn some skills to get ahead of the rest because it does take skill. I, you know, I mentioned this a couple of times, my background's the corporate world. So, you know, and I've done studies in accounting and a Bachelor of Business of Marketing and went back and did law and all this kind of, and I've got all these skills. Enter the network marketing world, none of that helped me. None of that. I didn't know what I was doing. I was getting rejection after rejection. I didn't know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to handle objections. Didn't know anything about the industry and I ended up not liking it. It's like, this is not me. This doesn't feel comfortable. I don't like approaching people. People that respected me in the corporate world were saying, what are you doing that for? Like they were putting me down. And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> and I'm way out of my comfort zone because I was confident as a general manager in the corporate world. Put me in this industry and I went to a bucket of whatever. Just crushed me. And it was a whole different skill level. So I had to learn the skills to then build the team and that was awesome and everything was wonderful and then that all fell apart because they're all family and friends and not targeted people and all the rest of it and like amazing people, don't get me wrong, but they just didn't want to do the work that I wanted to do. So then I turned to the online world and there's a whole nother skill level that I have invested heavily in to get where I've gotten all the things that I've done. It's just changed my life incredibly. But I've had to invest in the skills to do that with mentors and programs and training. I just haven't done it myself. So I just want to share with you, take some responsibility from where you're at financially. And if you need to swallow your pride and do some things to get some more money to invest in what you need to invest in to get the skills to build your business, do that. In the online world, do you need Facebook ads? Not everybody does, no. You can build a profile and a following and make sales and all that kind of thing without Facebook ads and people do it very successfully, but it's hard work. 
It is absolutely a lot of hard work and you need to be consistent, focused. You need to know what your brand is, what you're talking about, your content creation, all that kind of stuff. Facebook ads can help you speed up that process. They can help you find pre-qualified leads. Leads lead to sales and it's a wonderful thing, but if you do not know what you're doing, you need to find some programs, a mentor and whatever to teach you how to do it properly before your ad account gets shut down and you are going backwards and wasting hundreds and hundreds of dollars on ads because you don't really know what you're doing. So make sure you've got the skill level and be adult enough and big enough to know, I don't really know enough about this industry, so I'm still hassling all my friends and family and whatever, that's not the skill level you want anymore in this industry. Those days are gone. And I'm not saying people can't be successful in the traditional way, they can. If they've got an awesome personality, they've got a very large network of people and they're just um, vibrant in sharing their opportunity and so excited about life. Like People can be very successful the traditional way. But in social media, what worked on social media five years ago doesn't work today. What worked on social media six months ago doesn't work today. What worked two months ago in Facebook ads doesn't work today. You've got to keep up with it and learn the skills that you need to be successful in not only this industry, but if you're also doing it on social media, the skills that you need to be successful on the social media side of it. And if it costs money, so be it. Work out a way to fund it. Work out a way to sell things that you own to invest in the next training or a mentor or something like that. And that's what successful people do. And the people that have been on the bones of their ass, like your Oprahs and your Brendan Bouchards and you know amazing people that you look up to, they've had nothing, nothing and worked out a way to you know become successful. But it doesn't come without many sacrifices sometimes, or um, investing, investing in your learning, okay? Lee, corporate skills don't help me in the online space. Now, I'm sure there's skills that we've got that help us somewhere along the line, but honestly, coming from corporate doesn't make me any better at this industry from some, somebody that isn't from corporate by any means, um, you know, at, at all. <laughs> Okay, uh, Laurie, you definitely earn your money when it starts to come in. It's not the money falling out of the sky. Oh, doesn't money fall out of the sky, Laurie? I thought it did. We wish it did. Um, yeah, so it's, and you know, sometimes you have to hustle, guys. And in the online world, if you're not, if you're not going to do things like Facebook ads, then you need to get networking, guys. You need to make new friends on Facebook. You need to network with people and build relationships without being spammy. You know, all that kind of stuff. If you can't pay for it and speed it up, you need to be networking on social media. It's not going to come to you. People are not just going to come to you and show up and you do a Facebook Live and offer something out and there they are and they want to join you in your business. You, you need to hustle. So, you know, you need to work out what's right for you, but... We need to solve these money issues. One, having enough of it to fund what we need to do in our business and also learning the skills that you need to learn and investing in those skills to make sure you're not wasting your time. So you're actually doing, the action that you're taking is really effective action to get your results faster. So sometimes, you know the old saying guys, you gotta spend money to make money, it's so true. Because if you already had the skills to be successful, you'd already be successful, would you not? So it's a matter of taking that self-responsibility with not only where you're at financially, but also where you're at in your skill level. And you know, re taking a reality check with both of those things about where you're at. And trying to have still an abundant mentality around this and not focusing on the bills that are all coming in or the fact that yeah, I really wanna do that, but I can't afford it. I really wanna do that, but I can't afford it. Or worse, there's another new program and you've got the money. Ooh, I'll buy that. Ooh, I'll buy that. Ooh, I'll buy that. I've done plenty of that because I had, you know, the funds when I did, you know, all of that. But it's 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 not the answer. It's you just got to be a little bit smarter about both those sides. Okay, uh, Judy and Bob, empty your pockets to fill your mind to line your pocket. Ooh, very clever. I like that. Laurie, I think people think it's going to be easy, and I do get a little bit frustrated. 
um, with people that talk about this industry as being easy. Oh, you only need to get three people to get three people or building a business online. Um, yeah, just start a business page and the people will come. Neither of those things are reality at all. Anything that is really meaningful in your life is and financially um, you know, abundant in your life is going to take hard work more often than not. We, we just we don't get handed things by any means and it's those of you that are dedicated and will stick in in the hard times you know you're going paycheck to paycheck but you're still investing in some training like credit to you because that's the kind of mentality that you need and commitment and desire to keep you going and as long as you're making progress and not going backwards and if you're going backwards just reevaluate all the time take like i said was it yesterday or the day before take the emotion out of it and start evaluating okay that's really not working i'm not progressing what can i do differently i really need this skill level oh that's going to cost me some money oh okay what can i sell to pay for that like you just really need to evaluate where you're at with all of that to know where, how you can get there and take it seriously rather than just drowning in it because when we come to money we can seriously drown in it and when we really focused on you know there's so much going out i can't ever get in front i promise you you just end up with more bills <laughs> we need to attract abundance to us and have more money coming in than going out that's the objective at the end of the day isn't it and have an abundance of money coming in than going out so you can live the life that you want to that's what it's all about Jen, a business is not easy. It takes hard work and you have to put the time in. It doesn't happen overnight. And you know, think about traditional business, guys. It's really sad. I see it in our country town. So many businesses go up and you sort of look at it and go, oh, I wonder how long, how long that's going to last. And you might see some hang in there for six months or a year and then they're gone. And you know their investment in that business is a lot bigger than ours in this industry. You can spend hundreds of thousands, you know, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands in a bricks and mortar job, um, you know, uh, business, and you know, eighty percent of them fail within the first two to five years. Um, so you know, it happens a lot in this industry. Our expenses are minimal, but we still need to be able to afford the things that we need to afford to get it get it going and do the work and learn the skills to bring the people in, keep the customers coming in, keep the people coming into your business to make sure it's growing and not going backwards. And if it's going backwards, you take some pride out of it and you know take a reality check about what it is that you can do to move the needle forward. So it's really also about self-responsibility with where you're at at your business, where you're at with your finances and what is it that you can do to change that. Because nobody else is coming to save you. No one else is coming to, uh, you know, your Prince Charming to whisk you off your feet, ladies. That's all like it's, you know, that's not reality. We've all got to be responsible for, our, you know, our own expenses, our own lives, our own skill level, what we're doing in our business and what we're not doing in our business. Okay. Uh, Olive, why we need the personal development mindset so many times. Reminders. Absolutely. It's seriously, I mean, you guys know that listen to me five days a week. Um, the beginning of the week, I start with the personal growth, the personal development one. It is more important than anything. And I'm hoping I'm back. <laughs> My connection went again. I mean, I've gone enough. I need to, maybe that's a sign I need to get off because I'm, um, you know, just, just repeating myself. Um, but like Olive said, it's, it's more about what's going on in here with our money, our relationships, our relationship with money, the, the outlook, our personal uh, belief, our lack of self-esteem, what people think of us. That's, what's rule our, that's what rules our world. It really does. Everything else is the external outcomes of what we think about ourselves and others and potential and money and all the rest of it. It all comes down to the way you think. So it's really important to control the way you think. And if you don't like the way you think, if it's not necessarily positive, then start doing some work on that because you can't change it overnight. You can't change your life overnight. If anyone says you can, they're lying to you. 
it takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of repetition to change, you know, the your new normal um, in the way that you think, okay? So some of these things we just need to work on. But every now and again, we just need to do a bit of a reality check. Where am I at? Am I being responsible with my finances? Am I being realistic about my skill level with building a business online? All of that kind of stuff, okay? Does that make sense, guys? So I'll leave those thoughts with you. Take from that, you know, what 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 you will, but I hope it just provokes some thoughts, um, you know, about what you might be able to consider or look at or look at it from a different perspective in where you are at in your business. And most of all, never give up. There's always a way. You just may not see it yet, but there's always a way to figure stuff out. So just be more evaluative rather than emotional. If that's not a word, I just made it up. There's another one for the dictionary, Sean. But we need to evaluate more than get emotional. Most of us sit in emotion and go, woe is me, I don't have enough money, there's more bills going out than money coming in. Like we sit in this terrible emotion, which can be really negative and um, it, can, it can send us into a massive spiral. We need to get out of that and evaluate externally before we can actually make any changes. So really important for that whole self-responsibility. I can't feel sorry for myself. I've actually got to be realistic about where I am and how I can move the needle forward, okay? So, Melanie, 100%, I needed to hear this. I'm glad that whatever it was that um, you know was said was helpful to you, okay, guys? Keeping it real again, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I can't sit here and tell you that, you know, life is roses online and, you know, you're going to make lots of money and what it's bloody hard work. <laughs> we have to work hard at it and we have to increase our skill level. And I've done that and I know the difference it makes. And I've also done things that other people haven't been able to achieve because I'm just so damn consistent. I may not be the best, but I'm consistent. And that pays off, guys. When everyone else is falling away and you're still there being consistent, growing your audience and giving value, it'll pay off, okay? That's right, Sean, no pity parties allowed. Okay, guys, thank you for being here with me so long. This is a bit of a longer one. Now, remember, I'm interviewing Rose tomorrow, so that's gonna be pretty cool. Would love you to support her in her interview for winning the last video challenge, and we can gear up for the next video challenge. We'd love to have as many of you as possible participate. That It doesn't start until October 11th, um, but you can request to get into the group now, and I will be approving all those extra requests to the group on the 1st of October. So whatever part of the day it is for you, enjoy, have an awesome one, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Bye.